goal of a robot is to do a task that the human has in their mind, like making them a cup of coffee. Find a robot policy pi such that the difference in values between the robot policy and the optimal human policy is minimized for any definition of value that the human cares about. A powerful way to model robot decisions is via a Markov decision process, or MDP. MDPs are a tuple of state, actions, costs and transitions. In MDP, the robot begins at a state, takes an action, receives a cost and transitions to a next state. This repeats till the end of an episode. The policy pi tells a robot what actions to take at a particular state. The value of a policy is simply the sum of the cost it receives at every time step. Since the MDP can be stochastic, the robot may have to roll out its policy multiple times and take an average to compute an expected value. Finally, the goal is to find the optimal policy that minimizes this value. Herein lies the first challenge. The space of all sequence of actions is exponentially large. Let's say there are only four actions that it can take at time one. Upon taking that action, it ends up in one of four states from each of which it can take four more actions at time two. And so the tree grows exponentially. Formally, to find the optimal value of any state, the robot has to solve a cascaded set of optimization problems. Thankfully, there exists a beautiful recursive structure to the optimal value that was first discovered by Bellman. The idea is to work backwards in time, computing the values at each time step. So the value at time t is simply the minimum one-step cost from that state. The value at time t minus one is the minimum sum of one-step cost and the value of the next state. So for each state, look at where you end up in the next time step and choose the best action accordingly. We repeat this for t minus two and so on. This way, the complexity drops from exponential to linear in time. All of decision making boils down to solving this fundamental equation, the Bellman equation, to find the optimal value and subsequently the optimal policy. The interesting bit is that the robot doesn't know all the pieces in this equation. For instance, how costly an action is depends on the human, the task they want done, and the implicit constraints they carry. The transition function, how states evolve, depend on the world the robot lives in. And so, the only way for the robot to find the optimal value is by learning from interactions with both the human and the world. So, how should we train the robot to learn from interactions? The simplest approach is to treat this as a supervised learning problem. Engineers collect data from the human and the world and ship this to the robot. The robot trains offline by searching for the optimal policy that minimizes loss on the provided data. After training is done, the robot deploys the learned policy. Unfortunately, this fails spectacularly. It turns out that the loss of a policy depends on the distribution of states that the very policy visits. Different policy pi visit different states and observe different losses. So even if the robot does well on the training data collected by the human, at test time it may make mistakes and visit states the human hasn't seen before. This mismatch between training and test time breaks a core assumption in supervised learning. The data is IID. Here's where the framework of interactive online learning comes to the rescue. The framework treats learning as a game between the robot and the human world pair. The game begins by the robot playing a policy pi 1 and receiving a loss L1. The robot then updates the policy and plays pi 2 and receives a new loss L2 and the game continues. There's no real assumption on the loss L 
if you very arbitrarily, even adversarially, do thwart the robot. The goal of the learner is to minimize regret. Regret is the difference between the cumulative loss of the learner and the cumulative loss of the best policy in hindsight over n rounds of the game. A good learner can drive the average regret to zero as the number of rounds goes to infinity. This is paramount to the learner doing as well as it could have had it seen all the data up front. Learning is a game between robot and the human plus world, where robot plays a policy and gets a loss. But what should this loss be? As we mentioned earlier, the goal is to minimize the value difference between the robot policy and the optimal human policy. To express this as a loss, we will invoke the powerful performance difference lemma. The lemma adds and subtracts rollouts of the human policy from every state the robot visits. The lemma states the value difference is nothing but the sum of each of these terms. This can also be expressed as sum over time. At every time, look at the state the robot visits. Take the difference of the optimal action value of the robot policy minus the human policy. That is, difference between robot taking one step and rolling out with the human versus the human rolling out all the way. This difference is called the disadvantage and this is indeed a loss. So the story would be over if learning was just a game where the robot plays a policy pie and receives Q from the human plus world. However, the robot doesn't actually get the Q function, but gets clues about the Q function from the world and the human. The robot must then take these clues and piece them together to estimate the value function and subsequently the loss. The framework of reinforcement learning or RL looks at the interaction of the robot and the world. Assume we know the costs but must interact with the world to learn about transitions. The goal is to estimate the optimal Q function such that it satisfies the Bellman equation. That is, the optimal value is equal to the one step cost plus the optimal value of the next state. Here, the robot starts at an initial state and knows the goal it has to reach, but it does not know the transition function and hence needs to try out all the actions in the world to know the next state. Some of these actions lead to bad states, for instance, burning down the house. Eventually, through meticulous exploration, the robot figures out the sequence of actions that takes it to the goal state. What makes RL hard is that the robot must try out enough actions in the real world that can be expensive or even dangerous. The framework of imitation learning, or IL, looks at the interaction of the robot and the human. In this setting, the cost function is unknown in the mind of the human, and the human may tell the robot the optimal action at any state. The goal is to estimate the optimal Q function such that the human action has lower value than any alternate action. Once again, the robot begins at an initial state and queries the human at every state it visits. The human says which action is good and which are bad, based on which the robot may choose to never explore the bad actions. Eventually, the human not only guides the robot to the goal, but tells it what roads not to go down. This is why IL can be exponentially more sample efficient than RL. So far, we talked about two core ideas. First, the robot must play an interactive learning game with the human and the world, where the robot plays a policy and receives a loss. Second, to construct this loss, the robot receives clues about the optimal value function, which it pieces together to estimate it. Turns out, both of these ideas, interactive no regret learning and estimation of the value function, can be understood in a single unified game theoretic framework. This game is a min-max game between the robot policy and a value function estimator. 
The payoff of the gain is the value difference between the robot and the optimal human policy. The value function player tries to make the difference large while satisfying constraints induced by the observations from the human and the world. The robot learning goal is to reach epsilon equilibrium of this game. One strategy to play the game is that in every round the value function player plays best response, that is, returns the most discriminative value function, while the robot policy plays no regret that is a policy that does well on all the value functions it has seen thus far. This combination of strategies guides the players to an approximate equilibrium and achieves the goal. Robot learning is fundamentally challenging because of the degree of uncertainty in the value function. This uncertainty comes from both the world because of uncertain dynamics and perception as well as from humans because of their uncertain intent and values. Even if we were to represent this uncertainty somehow, planning under this uncertainty is theoretically and be hard in some cases and undecidable in others. And so we need new learning algorithms that can practically represent uncertainty. Gather information to collapse uncertainty when it can, and hedge against it when it can't. And it is the search for a unified answer to these questions that continue to drive many of his researchers today. We only scratch the tip of the iceberg. The story goes much deeper and is increasingly richer as we learn more. This is what we will explore in CS6756, Learning for Robot Decision Making that I'm teaching at Cornell in Fall 2022. Hope to see you there.